Welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Daniel Tucker and I'm the graduate program director in socially engaged art um, here at Moore. And I'm really excited to have, have assembled um, here with me uh, several alumni from the MA in socially engaged art program at Moore. Um, we've got somebody from um, our first graduating class uh, up to somebody from last year. And uh, this is a really special program, which is a, a one year intensive where um, people are oftentimes approaching uh, their practice in a sort of a diversity of different ways that you'll hear about. Um, and they are um, oftentimes kind of leaning more in the administrating, organizing, facilitating side of socially engaged art, but as you'll hear also have uh, their own artistic practices that they're bringing into the fold of their research and, and their larger kind of goals with their work. Uh, and so really just excited to have these folks that uh, I've had the pleasure of working with um, over the last um, seven years here at Moore to, um, to share a little bit about their pathways and their research, um, both during school and in their projects afterwards. Um, so I'm gonna kind of invite uh, these folks to, um, to share and go around um, and, and uh, reflect one by one, and then may kind of show back up and, and ask some clarifying questions at, at the end. Uh, but without further ado, uh, I'd like to ask um, folks, and we'll go kind of in, in alphabetical order according to, uh, to your last name, just to make it easy. Uh, and so I believe that that would then start with you, Yarub, but you can, every, everyone can double check that, uh, your last name. And what I'd love for you to do is um, for you to introduce yourself, uh, your name, when you graduated from Moore, uh, where you're at right now, um, and something that you remember um, about when, what you were doing or what you were thinking when you decided to apply to graduate school. Um, and so without further ado, I'll, I'll hand it off to uh, you, Yarub, to start us off. Thank you so much, Daniel, for that. Uh, it's really a pleasure and honor to be with all of you today. My name is Yarub al -Obaydi. And uh, I graduated from Moore College, socially engaged art program in 2019. I am living in Philadelphia right now. Uh, and uh, what came to, uh, to my mind and what, what actually my, my goal to, when I think to, to go to this program, uh, since I reached to the United States, I'm involved in many art projects and uh, I have some experience, this is practical. So I thought to support my practical experience with something academically to learn more from the expertise, from the professors about what's the meaning of socially engaged art, what's the technique, what the strategies I can use in my, in my artwork, how to support myself and make my project more engaged to people. And uh, that's the main goal I have in my in my mind when I search about to further my study. And uh, it's really, it's really honor to have uh, this project, th this program at Moore College. And then I admit and uh, finally I finish my study with more. I learn, learn more, uh, discover more things, engage with more artists, more community that all uh, teach me something in my journey. Thank you so much. Thanks, Yeru. Uh, Carrie? Hi, I'm Carrie Bresci, and I have confirmed from my diploma that I did graduate in 2017. Uh, I, I guess my aha moment, my aha of getting this master's degree was I was an executive director of an art center, and I had just finished a capital campaign to move it into a historic firehouse. Um, it was successful, but 
I thought to myself, is this what you're going to do? Crunch numbers? Are you going to be asking donors for money while it's all really a privilege to do that and meaningful? I was also working with teens at the time in utilizing the arts to give back to the community. And we all know that kind of community engagement was kind of a catchphrase at the time. And I thought, well, you know, what does that mean? And how can I make, so Carlisle is a rural kind of suburban area that doesn't appreciate the arts as much as they should. And so I thought, how can I make this community better? And when I saw the program, it really was a perfect opportunity to learn all that I could learn about community engaged arts and put it into practice. Uh, with the teens and within a community that really needed to understand how important it is for community engaged arts to be a part of the community. So I'm here, I applied, I went through the program, I've got my diploma. <laughs> Thanks, Gary. Megan? Yeah, um, I'm Megan Gillardi. Um, I graduated in 2021. Um, I I'm still in Philadelphia um, and I um, applied in 2020 during COVID um, and actually decided to apply uh, after being laid off from my job due to COVID. So I was working in the arts and um, was yeah laid off and decided that it seemed like a good idea to use that year of where it just didn't seem like a time that I was going to find a job in the arts. And I never knew when I would have time to go back to grad school. So I took that opportunity to do a one-year master's program and, and got my master's in socially engaged art between 2020 and 2021. Thanks, Megan. Um, okay, Kristen? Yes. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Kristen Chabrian. Um, so I graduated with Urub in 2019. Um, and I uh, currently still live in Philadelphia. I've been living in Philly for a long time. Um, I did recently uh, in September start working for PEN America, which is based in New York City, which is where I'm calling in from now. So um, I guess my aha moment was um, I was. I come from the uh, performing arts, from dance, and I was still dancing and choreographing uh, quite a bit, but I was kind of in a space where I was kind of searching for what was next. I was doing a lot of um, things, and <clears throat> but we would often were like um, public, um, it, like we were calling them like out in like a site specific work at the time, or you know, things like out in the city street, a lot of performances like that. And I was really interested in how we were working like with communities, with our audiences in these types of spaces. I was part of a project called the Philadelphia Learning Community, which was a Pew-funded project that combined um, historical spaces, musicians, anthropologists, dancers together. And I was really found it fascinating. It was exactly the kind of work I was really interested in. I wanted to know how to stay in that world. And it was through that that I heard about the program at Moore. Um, we then met with Daniel, talked about it, and then after about just about a year or so, um, to the other personal things going on, but I finally did apply and came um, for the year 2018 to 2019. Thanks, Kristen. Uh, and, and now Rachel. Hi, um, I'm Rachel Wallace. I finished the program in 2016. I am part of the original cohort, um, the OG of the group here. Uh, and I'm currently living in Columbus, Ohio. And uh, my aha moment was sort of unexpected for me. I was in the process of transitioning out of a nonprofit career and really beginning my, my practice as an artist. I hadn't, I was just really starting to take my work seriously as art and thinking about MFA programs, but the stuff I do is weird. It like is between craft and art and activism and, Fine, and I just, it didn't really seem like a good fit for anyone. And I actually knew Daniel from organizing an arts pro projects we'd worked on together in Chicago. And he sent out a big announcement that he was leaving Chicago to move to Philadelphia to begin the program. And I, I opened the email in that way that you open the emails of your like successful friends so that you can begrudgingly see their accomplishments and I don't know, fume about it for a little bit. 
And I read, I remember reading the description of the program and I was like, oh no, I'm going to have to apply to this. <laughs> like, this is going to be my pro. And it was. And I think it really, it was a remarkably good fit for the weirdness of my practice and the moment I was in at that time. Thanks, Rachel. Um, no, no begrudging necessary, uh, but glad, glad that you ended up there. And, and also, um, you know, in terms of all of your, your pathways, you know, I think that, that there's like, obviously incredible diversity across what you were doing before you came. Um, but also, you know, sort of a, a similar as, as, you know, kind of Rachel put it sort of like a similar kind of hybridity, you know, across all, all of you all. And so, uh, you know, certainly, um, excited to kind of be able to connect more of the dots now, um, virtually. Um, so the next thing I wanted to ask you all, um, to talk about again, um, is, uh, is if you could reflect on what you ended up writing your thesis, uh, about when you were here at Moore. Um, so in, in the one-year program, people do a lot, work on projects, you know, take a diversity of different classes. But one of the things that's kind of a through line um, is that people start working on a written thesis, uh, you know, pretty early on in the process, present it publicly through a qualifying review where you share your question and kind of get feedback on it. And then, and then through uh, a thesis, uh, you, you see through a thesis writing process uh, that results in in a public in a publication that is is something you know between 20 and 30 or 40 pages long depending on kind of who's who's working on it um and and so you know we'd just love to be able to share a little bit more about um about what you research but also if you could offer any advice to people in the program about how they could approach those thesis projects that would be great as well um so we'll just go in the same order if that's if that's all right so um my thesis is about enhancing the engagement uh within the museum galleries as i started my my position at penn museum as a global guide and educator in 2018 so i start to think about how to make the connection between visitors and the artifacts through the guide and how to transform the visitors uh, from the physical to emotional uh, presence. How to make the stories more as, as, a, as a form, uh, as a bridge between the uh, visitors and the galleries and the objects. So I believe there is so much stories not yet, not yet told and is very, very uh, interested to, to be listened. And uh, that's why I aim to build my, my thesis on this direction. And of course, after I this many, many discussion with, uh, with Daniel in that time, he gave me uh, great opinions, great tips. Then I also involved some of my readings. Some, so I conduct uh, some uh, research, some surveys to to learn more about what I'm going to write about. And after that, I decided to go with this direction and I found myself, I can achieve something uh, with this. And uh, yeah, I'm lucky to have so much interesting findings. And uh, that's actually what, what I start with and what I end up uh, with my thesis. So maybe I might, what I advise anyone to start with with something you love, uh, that's of course when you love what you what you do, absolutely will have uh, such a great uh, results. That's the thing. Thank you. Thanks, Yoru. Carrie. Okay, so I think we're all going to echo that sentiment about doing something that's meaningful because. Otherwise, wow, that's, you know, that's a lot of time being spent on something that is, <laughs> this is not very fun or pleasing. Uh, but, 
But for me, it was, I was working with teens at the time. And so I wanted to do my thesis on really the effects of socially engaged art programming on teens, who's listening to them and do self-confidence and community connectivity increase in teens who participate in socially engaged programming. And um, it was really important for me to have something that I could utilize in my practice and to also look at, again, I was fascinated with the idea of social engaged arts in larger cities and in larger museums and how that is also reflected in more rural and suburban areas. So to look at both of those things, um, it was really positive for me because then I was able to take everything that I discovered throughout that thesis and then utilize it in grant writing. Uh, you know, I write a lot of grants and of course they want a lot of qualitative statistics. And so I was forced to do that, to really look at that. So it was very meaningful for me. And, you know, I applaud those who are able to find that uh, meaning and purpose in their thesis. Thanks so much, Carrie. Uh, okay, uh, Megan. Yeah, so um, I wrote my thesis about uh, artist-run initiatives and um, the networks and um, connections between artist-run initiatives. Um, and I think um, my sort of advice to people in the program, I'm going to offer a little bit more practical advice that that I would give um, is to start would be to start thinking about your thesis really early on in the program that was something that I did that I think was really helpful to me um and to start and to use everything that you do throughout the program to in your thesis um that was something that I found really helpful I know that I used papers from previous from classes that I did in the beginning of the program and I kind of had a goal in mind as soon as I started I knew that that was going to be my thesis topic and then was able to really um, meet also meet a lot of people throughout the program that were able to offer advice and um, able to make connections with a lot of folks who were interview subjects for my thesis. And I was very focused on just that subject throughout the whole program instead of going different directions, which I thought was really productive for me in the program. So yeah, that's my advice. Megan, can you uh, clarify for folks like what what kinds of examples of artists run uh, projects you looked at? Yeah, so I looked at um, I looked at one individual space as a case study. I looked at Vox Populi, um, and then I looked at a project that happened in 2013 called Citywide. That was an exchange exhibition amongst artist run spaces in Philly, um, and then I also um, looked at Common Field, which is um, a network for. Um, artist run spaces. So, and so throughout the program, I knew that I wanted to write about artist run initiatives. Um, and just from the, from the beginning was meeting with folks who worked in these sorts of spaces and ran um, different initiatives and really focused on that. Thanks, Megan. Uh, Kristen? Yeah. So um, the title of my thesis I had, to, I had to double check though, I'm glad to look it up. It's called Living in the Fracture Performance and the Practice of Embodied Seeing. So I mentioned I came to the program from the performing arts, and I think I spent a lot of time at the beginning of the, my time in more sort of kind of figuring out where I could really use like that background and that interest in, in, um, quite frankly, in like embodiment and how both as the performer and as the witness we're experiencing something together and what that means. And so my advice actually is similar to Megan's, except for it comes from a place where I spent a lot of time sort of figuring it out in the, in the first semester at more. So my advice would be to like, as best as you can, start writing as soon as possible, because I found that that's where I was able to move forward when I stopped thinking so much and even researching so much, but just actually got down and got into writing. And that's what propelled me forward. So that was going to be my, my advice. And I guess along with that, for me, it was important to kind of remember that the thesis is like a beginning, if not an ending, so that it didn't actually have to be that great, to be honest, at the end. But it took me somewhere that I could keep using it and, and, and I still do use it. So I will say that. Daniel said to me, 
at one point, if I remember early on, or somewhere in my figuring out a topic, that one of my things is that I um, I couldn't have written about so much. I like so I'm so interested in so many topics. I think so many of us are. So kind of honing in and just starting was really important. Thanks, Kristen uh, and uh, Rachel. Well, I definitely hear and recognize a lot of what you guys are saying and your own experiences. Um, I decided coming in because it was a brand new program and there wasn't really that many other examples of it out in the field. I came into the program like being like, I don't know if this you know, diploma will serve me in the outer world professionally in the ways I expect. So I really want this to be an investment in my practice, right? Like if it's not an investment in a piece of paper, it has to be an investment in the work that I'm making now and the work I want to make in the future. Uh, so my thesis, I really wanted to answer a question that was really central to my practice, which was around the sort of challenges and opportunities of documenting and exhibiting work that is collaborative, is ever-changing, does not necessarily uh, produce a physical object and sort of what artists have done historically. Um, and I think it was really, it was challenging and interesting to me. It definitely took me more into the performance side of things, which wasn't the direction I came from, but really helped me sort of recognize and honor the process of my practice as being as valid and as much art as the end results, um, which I think both being able to understand that internally and to talk about it in applications has been really helpful for me. Um, but I also wanted to add the greatest, I think, again, similar to Kristen, the best piece of thesis advice I got um, during my time at Moore was done is good. That I found myself very wrapped up on like whether or not the thesis met my expectations for what I thought I sh a thesis should be. And a friend of mine who I was meeting with then, she's like, it doesn't have to meet that. It just has to be done. Done is good. And it really was, so. <laughs> well, I read all your thesis papers and they were all very good. And they were all done. <laughs> um, yeah, thank you. Uh, well, so now, you know, my, kind of my final uh, question for you all is, you know, more kind of thinking about sort of your, your life after school. Um, and so uh, would love for, each of you to share one project that you've done since um, the MA program and, and just give us a little bit about, um, a little bit of context as to, you know, sort of like what happened, uh, you know, what was part of the, the, pro the project um, and also um, any kind of reflections you have on it now, especially if it's something that, you know, has been um, a couple of years uh, in the past. Um, so, uh, Yarub, can I hand it off to you again? Yes, please. I'm going to share my screen also. Can you all see my screen? Good. So I am pleased to share. This is my project. We just, uh, we say we end, but it's actually not. <laughs> it's not going to end uh, because of so many nice things actually happened. Uh, so this Almudi Confluence is my last project. I collaborated with uh, another uh, environmental artist. Her name is Sarah Kavaj. And uh, the very interesting thing about this project is the idea started at Moore College. I met with Sarah at Moore College in her presentation, and then we start our, uh, to put the idea together about the project and what we are going to do. So this is a Reed house. Uh, this the first time built in about three or 4,000 years ago in Southern Iraq. And uh, we built this in Philadelphia at Schuylkill Center for Environmental Education. And we invited two different groups to meet together to build this structure. Uh, as I learned at Moore College, when you invite similar groups of people for something, that will be great, absolutely. But when you invite two different communities, they are very rare to meet somewhere, that will be very much more, more powerful. And that's actually what happened. Uh, so we invited, uh, those are the people who built Al Modif, and uh, they are Iraqi immigrants, refugees in Philadelphia with the veterans who serve in Iraq. 
and both have memories about Iraq, both have uh, so many things to share, and we just uh, create that space for them to be together, to share their opinions, to be the, their forum. They can say anything. They can be open to everyone. And uh, that's actually the kickoff day in uh, the Memorial Day in 2021. Uh, so the other, the other aspect about this project is we included multi-generational people when we invite the child and, and the father to be a part of this. And they are both excited and both uh, so willing to be a part of this from the beginning until the end. And also this is actually the, the outside, how it looks like from the outside. This is the Reed House and this bench uh, that was designed by Sarah Kavaj to be such a great conversation between the two, uh, the two elements in that space uh, when you know we have some we actually we educated about the materials uh, about the reeds itself how it's some people believe it's invasive in the United States uh, we say no is actually is very workable and we can do such a great uh, things out of reeds uh, this another level of uh, education we included in our project and we invited so many people who are veterans Iraqi Arab. Uh, civilian, just like uh, environmental uh, environment, and just like uh, to be socialized again, especially we started this project after COVID, and that's allowed us to host many people uh, to be together again. Another thing, we include food also. We, we have so many activities that uh, we share with, the, with, our, with our guests. And finally, we, we stop to call them guests. We call them collaborators uh, because they are really collaborators and the stakeholders uh, of our project. We build with them for them. Finally, I would like to share this. Uh, what is your sanctuary? Because this is the question we ask the people uh, who came to us and we asked them to attach this ribbon uh, outside to reflect what their term uh, sanctuary means to them. And actually there is so much uh, amazing uh, reflection about the word sanctuary, but we just found in the, because this project is for one year and we just, we plan to do the deinstallation uh, last, last week in the Memorial Day, but we found something very incredible when the bird uh, found a piece and that's a structure to be uh, his or her sanctuary. So she built the nest and there is a bear there, there is babies. That's why uh, she actually, uh, she pushed us to, to shift our plan and to leave that, that space for her to be her sanctuary with her babies. And that's why I say this project not going to end. And also we are working on a book to document this uh, project and to, make, to have so much stories from people uh, who, who, who been there, who helped to build this space. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, Carrie. My project that, you know, I, and I apologize, it's gonna be hard to talk about a project that I've been working on for four years and three minutes. Uh, it's called I'm Fine. Obviously something that we say when sometimes we're not fine. It's a community engaged project dedicated to mental health uh, awareness and support. It's dedicated to uh, a boy named Patrick. Patrick, um, Smith. Patrick was the son of Maureen Joyce, who completed his life in 2018, death by suicide. And in her grief, she went to her studio. She was a ceramic artist, is a ceramic artist. And she pounded the clay and she felt the healing process of the clay. And she thought about the mask that she would wear when she had to go out. She asked me to help facilitate one workshop. And that workshop was with teens and being a community engaged artist. And thank you more for helping me to navigate what it means to be a community engaged artist. We would ask people, what mask do I wear to face, portray, minimize, hide life's emotional challenges or struggles? So imagine this, this was pre-pandemic. 
and that was in 2019. So fast forward, we thought one workshop would be one workshop. It's now turned into over 40 workshops. It has, we've done probably seven residencies and we work with teens to seniors. This was WellSpan, these are hospital employees. Imagine respiratory nurses, cardiac nurses who have dealt with um, holding people's hands to say, and these are their words, um, you're going to be fine when you're not going to be fine. And so these workshops are meaningful in that there aren't enough resources out there for people dealing with mental health and navigating the health system. So we have these workshops so that they have a community and they can talk about what they're going through through the arts. There's many iterations of it. And the second component of the workshops is that we go to every community and we say, this is gonna be your exhibit, your mask making workshops. And then we create a large community wide exhibit. So this one was in Carlisle. There were over 250 masks. And then we went to uh, York for the last year and created over 300 masks and the community members curated it. It happened organically. They tell their stories. I love this. So old school, um, it's so old school, it's new school. We hotwire the phones and anyone who wants to tell their stories, they can about how they deal with their own struggles or what their masks mean. They also curate what it looks like to tell the stories. And then of course, every exhibit. So we are on now, we had three installations in Carlisle, Lemoyne, Mechanicsburg area. We are now in York. We just um, set up our 10th installation and we make sure that they're public, that they're in Spanish, that they have braille, that there are uh, low um, pedestals, so that they're accessible and that of course they're out in the public and for all of the public to see. What will that look like moving forward? Uh, so it's now a statewide um, project and it's supported by Pennsylvania Council in the Arts. And from York, we'll be going to Pittsburgh. We're working with Carnegie Mellon for the next year. We'll start with Pittsburgh Center for the Arts and Media. But again, as I learned it more and in all of our classes, it will happen organically. The community will tell us what they need and who we should work with. And so from there, we uh, Perry County has reached out, Bradford County, Monroe. Um, and we're hoping at the end of it, all of those masks get packed up in their own community. And then in 2024, we will exhibit all 2000 or more of the masks so that it will be the thread to talk about mental health and mental health conversations conversations to destigmatize it but then at the same time talk to legislators about just how important the arts are and honestly this is not a promotion for for more because I'm on this video but I would not be the facilitator I am today without having gone through that master's program that's that's clear to me so I hope you're all fine but please if you're not fine talk about it thank you Carrie um Megan yeah, so I guess a little different than um, other the other two. Um, I, after finishing my master's, I took on just a uh, job as um, with mural arts as a the a manager of project administration. So my current role, I am working with mural arts and running their project management office. So just have a full time job and have been doing that for almost six months now. Um, which is a very big, very scary job um, where I oversee um, the entire project management office and make sure that all of the deadlines and budgets and everything comes in on time. Um, I also have just started taking on a, a special project with them right now where I will be overseeing a space um, that was offered to us by a real estate developer um, that wanted to collaborate with mural arts. Um, so my interest, obviously, as I said earlier, is in spaces and um, supporting Philadelphia artists. So um, a real estate developer um, wanted to collaborate with mural arts to showcase their support for Philadelphia artists and had 
a storefront at 16th and Market. Um, and so I will be overseeing that project where we will have a space for artists to work on mural projects and also showcase the work of um, some of our artists from mural art. So I personally am overseeing that project, which is really exciting to me because a lot of the work that I do as the project management officer is more spreadsheets and budgets and sort of admin work. Um, but I sort of stepped up and offered to oversee that special project and I'm really excited about it because it's the things that I'm passionate about. So we're going to get started on that and more details to come about some tours of that space. So it'll be fun if you're in Philly to stop by and see it. That's exciting, Megan. Yeah, thanks for sharing. Um, okay, uh, Kristen? Oh, these are also so wonderful to hear. Um, so I also kind of took a different path from making work. I am... Um, would say when I left more, um, I thought at first that I might try to get some sort of admin job, um, but I was always teaching. Um, and I had, as I mentioned, my thesis for became a beginning, a little bit of a launch pad for some, some writing projects. So I kind of dove into more of writing. And um, one of the things that I did for myself while I was at Moore was apply to speak at a conference on my thesis, which I hadn't written yet, but I just did that. Um, thanks to Daniel's suggestion, I believe, somewhere along the way. So um, because it was accepted, it gave me something to do right after graduation. And then that actually has turned into um, me taking that chapter, one of my case studies, and using it um, that I Co and just finished co-writing a chapter that will be in an anthology, a humanities anthology, um, with one of the professors from Moore, Carolyn Chernoff, um, for uh, this anthology called Dreams and Atrocities. So I feel like I keep mining my thesis actually in ways that I didn't expect, and I continue to do that with another project from an MFA student at Moore, because we're both really interested in how you both teach and present works that depict violence because um, my interest in performance art and really very interested in how violence and art intersect. So that's kind of one of my things that I do with my project and I think it just continues on um, still. And I would say that I wanted to just mention that one of the things I did after more was, as I mentioned, the work dive into research and writing and I was still teaching. And then, of course, COVID and all of our lives changed, and I decided to return to what I thought I might do, which was to get a job um, at a nonprofit. So I do work for Pan America now, and what I get to do here sort of pulls things together. Sort of like we all said that we had come from eclectic backgrounds to grad school. I feel like this is the similar thing, and I even said in my interview here, like, I have a very strange background. I don't know where I can get a job, but... It works here. So I do some public programming um, on with historians and scholars in different ways for expression, um, uh, you know, in history. And then I do some work with higher education on how you teach difficult subjects in higher ed. So it kind of all played into this, this job that I keep sort of creating for myself here. So that, that's, that's kind of just another thing that was unexpected that came out of my degree. Very cool. Thanks, Kristen. Uh, and Rachel? Yeah. So as I said, when talking about my thesis, my work has always been really collaborative, community-based, um, very slow, and there's a lot of sitting together and being together and making together. So as I imagine for a lot of you guys, COVID really threw me through a loop, and I was like, I don't know how to make art in quarantine, right? Like, I don't know what I do here. Um, and I was really lucky, um, a friend and um, mentor of mine, Miriam Kaba, reached out to me to collaborate on a quilt project with her. And she said that, um, you know, she had been researching a massacre of prison laborers in the 1940s in Georgia and was interested in writing some sort of publication on it. And she really values these intersections between art research and organizing and has used a lot of art and illustration in her works. But she's like, I wanna do something different in this. I want you to make a quilt to, to go along with the writing I'm doing. So she sort of gave me her archive of historical research, what she had written so far, and asked me to be the inaugural um, 
artist in residence at Project Nia, uh, a, a prison abolition organization she helped found. Um, so I got to spend a year working in a really different kind of collaboration, right? A distance collaboration, in a lot of ways, collaborating with the archive, collaborating with the documents and the organizing that had gone before. Um, and so the quilt is finished now. You can see it. There's a website for it called angulamassacre.com where you can see pictures of the quilt. There's a lot of detail um, work here. But I think one of the, the reasons it really ties in to my thesis is this idea of like seeing the art making practice as something beyond the making, that seeing the practice as being broader than the art itself. Um, so in addition to putting together some sort of publication and probably curriculum um, that will uh, you know, be created by Miriam and I in, in accompanying this quilt, I've also been organizing a conference this summer at the School of the Art Institute on um, quilts, healing, and abolition. Um, so looking at the radical history of quilting and its role in abolitionist movements, both uh, movements for the abolition of slavery, but also movements for the abolition of, of prison and policing today. Um, and my collaborators on the conference are also we're editing a publication together based on that topic. And I think really, and, and again, sort of going back to the space I found for myself at, at Moore, my work is in this, I, I exist in a weird space between academic knowledge and folk knowledge, between grassroots organizing and fine art, between craft. Um, and sort of realizing that the spaces for me to be in don't necessarily exist, but I have all of the tools to make those spaces. So if I wanna be in conversation with radical quilters from the academy and outside of the academy to talk about these things, I can make that happen. Um, and I, I really value that. And I really like the idea of sort of continuing these hybrid spaces that value collaboration and value the production of knowledge outside of academic institutions necessarily and like the value of that knowledge. Thank you, Rachel. I feel like you're all like uh, making things happen like Rachel described, right? I mean, that's, you know, that that's what you, you're you good at. That's, you know, that that's your impulse. You know, it's clearly, um, you know, running through all of your practices, um, both, you know, sort of, when you were grad students and of course now that you're you know developing all these projects independently um and through your jobs and residencies and things like that so uh really exciting really a pleasure to hear some updates from you all um and also just you know miss talking to you all about what you're up to and and hearing all, all the cool things that you're thinking about i mean certainly it's a you know a, a big uh you know kind of high point and pleasure of of my work is you know just getting to kind of like interface with the questions and communities that that you're all engaged with um so thank you for sharing <laughs>